Hi. Can you tell me where I need to go to speak to someone about an ad I saw in the paper about a religious organization? Yes, of course. We're so glad you're here. Just go through those glass doors down there and then take a left at the first hallway. It will be the first door on your left. Thank you. Hi. I saw your ad in the paper and I was wondering if you could maybe explain a little more to me about what it meant. Of course, please come in and have a seat. Well, um, I don't mean to be rude here, but I must let you know that this isn't the first religious organization that I've talked to about these things. I have visited other religious places before this one. Well, I appreciate your honesty. But here we believe that not only the blessings and wonders waiting for all those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ should be known to them, but also everything that will be required of those who desire to serve him. It's for the glory of God that we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And although it's true that many who decide to call upon him are at the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, at a point in their lives where they feel they have no place else to turn, we believe it's vitally important for them to know everything there is to know about him. Well, I guess since I'm here, the least I can do is listen for a while. What I'm going to do is ask you to consider joining what is commonly referred to as a religious organization and we'll offer you here just a few of the requirements. First, some of the stipulations that you will need to adhere to. You must hate this world. Is the first, the offerings that bring pleasure to your flesh, which our king has phrased thusly. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Those day-to-day -day pleasures that this world offers you must no longer seek after. Next would be that you must hate your own family. They are to be placed second behind your king. And if they do not also follow his ordinances, they are to be forsaken completely. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? This, of course, includes all past and present friendships, and, of course, any possible future relationships, if they do not also serve your king. There is to be no interpersonal relationship with them either. Next will be a hatred of your own life. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. You will be required to detest any and all desires within yourself that do not fall in line with the desires of your new master, along with any selfish ambitions that do not lift up his name. All of your past accomplishments are to be counted as dung, as a complete and total waste of your time, and any future endeavors that you may attempt to attain to, if not for his glory alone, are to be abstained from. In a word, all of the previous statements can be stated thusly, you are to die to self, completely and without any reservations. Oh, wow. I didn't hear any of that from any of the other places I checked out. Nobody said anything about dying to self or that I might lose my friends and family, much less about having to suffer for him. Yes, these things are rarely mentioned, I'm afraid, but they are very important. Please, let me continue. Next, you must be willing to accept whatever your king brings into your life. There is to be no questioning of this as one of his servants of the past has put it. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. If our Lord, which is just one of the ways you will always be expected to address him, decides to give you the things you desire, you will accept them. If he decides to remove all from you and leave you with nothing but the food you need for that day and the clothes on your back, 
that also will be accepted by you, and you will be expected to lift up his holy name in your heart, no matter what he decides is best for you. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You also must be willing, and not only willing, but expecting to suffer both mental and physical pain, if that is his will for you, accepting it with joy and thanksgiving, for as long as he determines to leave you in it, along with any chastisements he decides to bring into your life. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. In a word, you will be expected to accept his sovereign will in your life, no matter what circumstances he decides to bring into your life, or the possible consequences to yourself. If he says you are to die for him, you will be expected to die for him in the manner he has chosen. You will be allowed to retain some of your free will, but never at the expense of his will for you. Oh, I don't know about all this. I've talked with at least a dozen pastors over the last few weeks, and quite a few people who say they're saved, but nobody mentioned any of this. They all said that Jesus would take away all my pain, my sorrow, and my troubles. That once I accepted him, that my life would be wonderful and everything would be great. Nobody said anything about suffering or having to die to myself, much less that I had to place him first in everything. Well, to tell you the truth, that isn't unusual, and we tend to hear that quite often. Like I mentioned earlier, many people who are seeking relief from the trials in their life are willing to grasp at almost anything to give them hope. And sadly, while those you have spoken to may have had good intentions, many times they are more concerned with helping people out of their current situation and tend not to mention what they might consider the disadvantages of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. At times, they want to offer him as a quick fix to their problems and neglect to mention that this is an eternal choice with eternal consequences. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see that. To tell you the truth, I really don't see anything in it for me but a lot of possible suffering and the loss of, well, it sounds like everything I hold dear to me in my life. I understand completely, but please, I would be remiss if I did not reveal to you the rewards for this total and willing service to the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of God. He loves you so much. And as it's evident by your being here, you're seeking for him as well. You mentioned that you've asked many questions of people who claim to serve him, and perhaps some of them actually do, but you haven't received the answers that you're looking for, let me offer you these truths, these promises from the scriptures. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I had no idea. All that's waiting for me? But why would he give me all that? I don't deserve anything like what you just said. Why does he love me that much? Because you are precious in his sight. Because you are more than special to him, you are one of his creations. One whom he died for so that you could be saved from eternal damnation. Because he loves you. A terrible price was paid for you. The one who offers you all that I have told you about and requires all that I revealed to you today is worthy of all that he asks of you. He paid a debt he did not owe for you, and all that call upon him for the salvation of their soul will find that all that he brings into their life will be for good, and that no matter what he brings or allows to come into your life is because he loves you. The choice is yours.